So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create 3D drop shadows for your type inside Photoshop. Now I've previously done this and shown this inside Illustrator, so I'll link a way to do that as well, as I think the Illustrator way works a little bit better. But if you only have access to Photoshop or you prefer working in Photoshop, this way absolutely works as well. And just quickly to show you what I'm talking about here, if you look at the 3D type typed out, I can turn on and off this effect that I applied that goes ahead and makes that 3D extruded appearance. And it's actually pretty easy to do. So let's just jump into it. So first up, you're gonna to wanna to start with some type. And this type already has a stroke applied to it, but we can go ahead and do that. So make sure you have your type typed out. And I'm just gonna remove this stroke so we can go ahead and do that as part of this video. And make sure that your type is on a transparent background as that'll be something that's needed in order to make all this work properly. But if you type the type out in Photoshop or bring it in from Illustrator, either way, it should naturally have a transparent background. So you should be pretty good to go there. But just make sure everything is set and totally the way you want it to be before we get started here, because once you start applying effects, it's gonna be kind of the way it is. So make those changes and get your type looking good first. So first up here in your layers palette, you wanna select that layer of type. In this case, it's called 3D type because that's what I typed out. If I turn that on and off, just make sure that layer is selected because we're gonna to wanna to add a stroke to this type. So to do that, we wanna to go to FX, this little button in the bottom of the layers palette. It'll say add a layer style. The icon looks like an FX, like I said before. Just click that, and then from that menu, you want to click on stroke. And in this case, I made my stroke size 10 pixels. The position is set to outside, and just put the blend mode to normal, make the opacity be 100%, and the color here, this little color thing, you can go ahead and click that, that little thumbnail, and select whatever color you want. You might also want to copy the hex code right here from this window, the color pick a window that pops up, in case you want to make sure that all your different 3D extrudes match that color identically, because that'll be an important aspect of doing this. So once you have your color picked, go ahead and hit OK. Make sure you Control C or Command C to copy this hex code. And then you can go ahead and close this layer style window as well. So next up here, we wanna make sure that type layer is still selected. As you can see, it now has this stroke applied to it. And to duplicate this layer, which is something we're gonna to wanna to do, you can either hit Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac, or just click, hold, and drag that layer over the little page icon in the layers menu, which will also duplicate that layer. And also because we have two of these type layers now you can just go ahead and there's these little eyeballs next to them just click the eyeball on the one below it to hide that so that way when you click this one on and off it's by itself because we don't want to see our old type layer behind it but now that we have this stroke applied to the type we actually want to make this a solid layer without an effect applied to it so that way our 3d extrude actually takes into effect the fact that there's this black line if we were to use the drop shadow effect without doing this step, it would just create a drop shadow off of the white part of this type and it would ignore the black part, which is something we don't want because it wouldn't line up and look proper. So an easy way to just to merge all these things together is to create a new layer above the type layer. And you can do that by just going down to the menu at the bottom here. There's a little icon that looks like a page turning. Just go ahead and click that. If you hover over it, it'll say create a new layer. And then you want to hold down shift when this new layer is selected and also select the type layer that should be directly below it. So now as you can see in the layers palette right here, both layers are selected. Next up, you want to click off kind of to the side of the blank layer that's probably called layer one in your Photoshop. Click right here on the side, you want to right click and then you want to merge layers. If you don't see that option, you might be clicking somewhere like this, like right over where it says 3D type copy, you wanna do that in the blank part of this layer. So just make sure you right click there and then merge these together. So now we have the type right here with the black stroke applied to it and it's all part of the same layer and it still maintains that transparent background, which is nice. But this will allow us to do the next step, which as you can see above here, there's a bunch of drop shadows, which is actually how we pull this look off. So I'm just gonna name this layer type so it doesn't have a random name that doesn't really make much sense. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the 3D extrude portion of this. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here. Things might look a little bit pixelated, but that's fine because we're above 100% now as far as the zoom goes. But you wanna make sure your type layer is selected, the one that we just merged together. Go back to the FX menu at the bottom of the layers palette. And you want to, from this FX menu, click on drop shadow, which should be at the bottom. Maybe it'll be somewhere else. It doesn't really matter 
So as you can see right here, here is the drop shadow menu. And just as a quick thing to do first to clean up this menu, yours might look quite a bit different with a bunch of different options here. There's an FX button in the lower left hand corner. Click that and you want to click on delete hidden effects. Basically anything that isn't applied will be removed and it will just clean up our little layer style menu here a little bit. So I deleted all those extra drop shadows so we just have the basic drop shadow that we're going to be working with right here. So from this we want to make sure blend mode is set to normal. I think it defaults to multiply but just make sure you select normal. So that's at the very top and then you want to click on this little thumbnail of color to the right of that which will bring up a color picker and you just want to match the color exactly. So as you can see it automatically brings up this color picker thing right here on my screen which you might seem really small but you can either click on the stroke of that type that whatever color you've made it should make it that perfect color or you can copy and paste that hex code in right here which in my case was 1d 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 but it doesn't really matter if for some reason you want the 3d extrude to be a different color than your stroke you can also do that right now at this step so a few things to consider here when we're working with this drop shadow we want to make sure spread is set to zero so just make sure this Red thing right here is all the way down to zero. You want to make sure size is all the way to zero, which will make it sharp as opposed to blurry. And also the distance is what will decide how far this drop shadow goes. So just as a really quick demonstration, this is way too much for what we're doing right here, but this is a very large distance. The only problem, as you can see, is that it doesn't fill in these gaps very well. But one helpful thing of making that distance way too big is that you can use this angle slider right here to very quickly decide what angle you want your drop shadow to be. It's much easier to visualize like this. So just set the angle using this little angle slider thing. You can click here and it will automatically go ahead and shift that around or you can manually enter in a number. But just get that set before we do all these other steps because they're all kind of interrelated with each other. So in my testing at this size of document, which I think is, if I just close out of this quick, this particular document is 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels high. I found that three point looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go back here to drop shadow once again. There's all these extra drop shadows now, so I'm gonna delete those. So make sure this color is correct, which is correct for me. And I'm gonna set the distance to three pixels. And the reason I'm doing that is that the more that this distance goes out, it might appear to have like a rougher transition. And these numbers will totally change depending on the size of your stroke and the size of your document. For my testing, I found that three pixels hides it really well. It makes this a very repeatable effect. So just make sure your distance is set so that it looks like it's nice and flush essentially with that stroke. If I turn the drop shadow off, you can tell what's happening on that type here. It's just making a very slight extrude. So now all that we have to do essentially to make that extrude much larger is repeat this process a bunch of times, which isn't the most efficient thing, but it definitely works. So to do that, next to drop shadow, there should be a plus icon, which you can click, which will then go ahead and duplicate that blending option. And basically this is in order of appearance. So the top one will be at the top, the next one will be behind that. And what we're going to do is just increase the distance of each one of these drop shadow layers by whatever the original number was. So the first one here will be three, which means we're going to double that for the second one. So it makes the exact same distance past that original three. So we want to make this one six. And I'm going to hit that icon again to just do this one more time. So if, for example, you picked two for the first one, your second one would be four. So just double that every time. So since I'm working in groups of three, this goes three and then six. And then this one will be nine. And you just continue doing that, adding more and more drop shadow layers, adding that initial amount every time. So this one will be 12, add another one. And each time you click on it, just make sure you're clicking on your new drop shadow layer so that it has the proper one selected as you add these increasing distances. So I'm gonna keep doing this for a little while until we get this looking pretty good. Let's do a couple more. So this one will be 24, and then three more on that is 27. So that adds a pretty significant drop shadow to this particular type right here. And basically the smaller amount of distance that you do, the smoother this will be, but I'm zoomed in at 400% right here. So if I click okay to turn off this layer style and then zoom out to 100%, 
This looks visually very smooth at the actual 100% distance, so that looks just fine. And as I look at the type right here, you can tell that there's this multiple drop shadows applied. If I turn that on and off, that's the extrude. And that is one way to add a 3D type extrude inside Photoshop. A couple notes worth considering here. The reason why I used a stroke on this is because it's much, much more forgiving than using just the type itself as the thing you're using the drop shadow off of. The stroke kind of helps you make a larger distance without it being visually distinguishable. If you don't use a stroke, the most you can do is a one pixel distance, which when it comes to the effects commands, you can only add so many before it prevents you from adding more, which is why number one, you want to clear out all those hidden ones that you're not using. And also using a stroke like I did allows you to create a much more impactful drop shadow, just like the one you see right here. And also with everything Photoshop, there's probably a million different ways that you can achieve this effect. If you wanted to, you could just duplicate these layers and then move them all one pixel by one pixel, for example, and just keep doing that over and over again until it extrudes the type. You could build that into a Photoshop action if you wanted to do that for you. But this is just one way of solving this kind of unique problem inside Photoshop. And I thought that was kind of neat, so I wanted to go ahead and share that. But should you have any additional questions or even different methods of achieving this look, feel free to say so in the comments. I would certainly appreciate those. And if you found this video helpful, you can go ahead and hit the thumbs up button to let me know I did a good job. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new content for designers. Thank you so much for watching.